Hey guys, Abo Body here. I'm at Work Comp 2023. It's Tuesday again, and I'm here with a really longtime friend here, Andy Zapata, PT now. Right. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for being on here. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the uh, Always, always, always makes me look good when I got good people surrounding me. Right. Thank you, my brother. Thank so, you. thank you, man. Um, so, uh, Andy PT, now you started this amazing franchise. How many locations you guys got now, brother? We we have about forty five inside the physical therapy brand, and then okay. we have a management service organization with another almost thirty uh, locations now. So okay, total wow. about 75, 70 locations under management. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, so tell me a little bit about you. I think obviously a lot of people in the in the industry know you. Uh, tell me a little bit about you. Like, where did you grow up? Um, how did you get into PT? Stuff like that. Wow. So, man, I started this in 2003 uh, okay. when I first started in the industry. So it's been two decades of me doing physical therapy, Medicare, personal injury, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the way, you know, I grew up in Miami, down in the hood, like a uh, like A-Rod would say, the hood, Kendall, yeah. what's Kendall. up? Okay. 305 Kendall area, <laughs> <laughs> the hood, which is not the hood. It's a I nice was, nice suburb of Miami. I was born in uh, Kendall when it was just a little hospital in 1980s. So I don't know what he's nice. talking about. <laughs> I didn't live in Kendall. I lived in North Miami Beach, but yeah. What's up with A-Rod, man? The hood, the hell's wrong with this I'm guy? He's looking for street cat. I don't know. He doesn't need it though. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. So I grew up in Kendall, good parents, came from Columbia when I was young, hey. grew up in Miami uh, at the age of two. I, I came at the age of two okay. and then, you know, then I did good, graduated from high school in Miami. Which went, high school? I went to Braddock. Oh, <laughs> Braddock, okay. So I you went to Braddock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have a really good reputation. <laughs> really nice kids come out of Braddock. So the Bulldogs? The Bulldogs, the Bulldogs yeah. that's, right, right. that's right. So Braddock and then went to uh, Illinois to finish school in uh, Illinois after after that. I started oh, college there. Okay. And then I came down and I became an occupational therapist. I was studying pre-med and okay. then I decided, dude, I talked to a lot of doctors and they were miserable. Yeah. Like I, in, I interned with three different doctors and I made a decision. They all told me, don't get into this. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of work, not enough money. A lot of work, not enough money. Mm -hmm. The third guy would just look miserable and he says, don't do pre-med. Trust me, Andy, don't do, so I said, damn, what am I gonna do? I didn't wanna do physical therapy because it was too long at that time. Mm. Said, Let me do OT and see how it goes. And ends up OT was a great gateway for me to do business because I didn't understand the business yet. Okay. But I practiced really for about eight months when I realized, you know, it's nice to treat patients, it's beautiful. There's a lot of um, gratitude that comes in when you make people feel amazing and you make them feel great, they're so grateful. You know, it's a very warm feeling inside. But then I was like, I can't help enough people. I can only help 10 people a day. Mm -hmm. How can I help 100,000 people a year? Like, and, mm -hmm. and the only way is to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. And also the money, you know, you can only get to a certain amount of money as a therapist. And I was like, no, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. I need to make more money. Okay. So I learned the systems by asking a lot of questions. And this is something that I teach everybody. It's like, just ask a lot of questions because I was 24 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about growing a physical therapy center or how to get clients or or the systems needed to operate. Mm -hmm. So I just started asking a lot of questions to a lot of people that were smarter than me. Some of them would give me little piece, bits and pieces of the info of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And some of them gave me a little bit more of the puzzle, but okay. nobody gave me the entire formula. You gotta put it together. If it was- You gotta uh, put it together. If it was there, everyone would do it. It yeah. just doesn't exist. You gotta make your own path. Yeah, yeah and, and people were nice, but they were also, imagine I'm in Miami. I only know people from Miami. And so the people that I was asking these uh, questions were my same competitors. Mm -hmm. So they were nice, you know, they were, they were great people. They would say, oh, just do this, fill out this form. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't give me the whole formula. And mm -hmm. this is important because this is kind of what leaped me into opening the franchise, which we're gonna talk about a little bit. Okay. But after I opened up my first location, three years later, I had three locations. Wow. I was seeing 300 new patients a month in each okay. location. Wow. So we were rocking it, mm -hmm. but we were focused only on one industry, which is the federal government. I learned my lesson six years down the line that if the government changes one little itsy bits, like we learned our lesson this mm -hmm. year, yeah. that if the feds or the state changes one thing, then you're done. Your whole business can go out in one minute. Yeah, one law change and- One law change, oh, you're done. Yeah. So. What I did is I learned the systems by asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And then I started selling the formula, 
physical okay. therapists, entrepreneurs would come up to me and say, Andy, how'd you do that? How are you getting 300 new patients? How'd you open three clinics? I said, you know, give me $10,000, I'll teach you. Mm -hmm. Give me $20,000, I'll teach you. And that was really good. But then I said, well, what's the next big ticket item? Mm -hmm. And then I realized people were paying $100,000 for a clinic. Wow. And I was like, $100,000 for a clinic? Shit, I'm going to start building clinics. I already know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So between 2006 and 2010, I must have sold like about 10 clinics. No, I'm sorry, 10 clinics a year. So about okay. 30, 40 clinics. Okay. And I made a lot of money selling clinics. Like that was 100,000, 70, it was like 25,000, 35,000, you know, first come, first serve, 75,000, 100,000. After the first few, you started up in the price because you had a better- I started system. consulting and then people were just buying these like hotcakes. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people coming from out of town buying them and then destroying them and then buying more. So it was mm -hmm. crazy. And 2010, because of all the fraud, everything, they, they put a monitorium on Medicare numbers. So oh. you couldn't get a clinic. And if I couldn't get a Medicare number, I couldn't sell the clinic because that, that was what, what was the value oh. back then. Because okay. with Medicare, then you get Humana, Blue Cross, Avmed, Cigna, you get all the other insurances, right? Okay. So I was really selling a full service physical therapy center. Mm -hmm. And then 2010 came around, kind of slowed down. And I had three clinics at that time still, my three base ones. Okay. Extended to five. But in 2015, another chapter in my life came where I was really bored. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, I have five clinics. I'm doing amazing. I have kids. You have five clinics that you run personally. And I run by myself. And then you have the other clinics with the franchise. No. Not yet. No, between okay. 2010, 2015, I just sat down and built the systems even stronger than I okay. had. Gotcha. I figured out the SEO all the AdWords, I figured everything out, even more. I tweaked the system for five years. Mm -hmm. And then I got really bored. I was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, just bored out of my ass. And, and I remember sitting back and thinking like, what's my next step? And thinking, what's the next big ticket item? Like a hundred thousand is good. How can I make bigger ticket items? Because marketing to patients is fun. It's cool. But there's also other life outside of your your, in what I call in the box business, right? You're in the box, mm -hmm. you're marketing to patients, but how do you grow lateral your business? And mm -hmm. that's with more locations. So I, I kind of started thinking for a few months, like, what is it that I'm really good at? What do I know how to do like the back of my hand? Well, you know, for the last 10 years, seven years, I've been building clinics. I've been selling clinics. I've been getting them credentials with other insurances and I've been mentoring people how to operate them. So I thought, man, can I do a licensing deal? Can I teach people and still keep the same name? Mm -hmm. But a lot of attorneys told me, don't do that because you lose control with licensing. It's cool, but you lose control. So I said, okay. So one of the attorneys told me, why don't you try franchising? I said, huh, what is that? I didn't even know franchising existed for healthcare. And it really doesn't, it's not common. You think of franchise, you think restaurant. Mm -hmm. You think cleaning, you think other things other than healthcare. Yeah. So franchising in healthcare is not common. And then I decided to do a franchise and that propelled me and opened the doors to so many other things. Obviously there's a lot of challenges with franchising that I wasn't aware of, but that's how I got to this. So I went from consulting to selling clinics to now we've sold over 130 clinics. Wow. Okay. Between the franchises, reselling franchises, opening franchises, the f initial 30, 40 that I built and sold. Mm -hmm. So we've sold a lot of clinics. Nice. Yeah. That's how we got to where we're at. Cool. And so um, did, did Medicare ever get rid of the moratorium on yes. Medicare numbers? Yeah. They, they paused yeah. it, but they reopened That's it. right. Oh, okay. That's okay. right. Gotcha. Okay. I was wondering about that. Yeah. They did it probably like five years, six years. And okay. then that's when I was able to do the, the launch of the okay. physical therapy because now I can do it again. But now I kept everybody under one brand. Okay. One umbrella, one name. Okay. And it's worked very well. So initially you started out, you were just helping people out, charging them a consulting fee and they did their own PT clinic. That's right, okay. under their name. And then right. I saw a lot of them failing because mm. I wouldn't, you know, there was it wasn't my business. My business right. was to build it and sell it. Yeah, set it up for them. Set see. it up. Okay. I would consult them for three months. Ask okay. me anything you want for three months, I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. And then don't call me again. You didn't pay me for consulting. Yeah. You, you paid me to sell your clinic. Right, right, right. And I did yeah. very well. I mean, that was a lot of money. It's still a lot of money. We're still selling clinics. Mm. Some PT now, some not PT now. Okay. okay. But it's still cool. a good business. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with uh, I'm going through this now with my MRI centers. I find that the MRI center does better 
the more locations you have because people understand the brand and they know, okay, well, this, this guy is good over here. Let me try him over there. And it's the same consistent brand because it's the same uh, ownership. That's right. Um, and so uh, that probably works a lot with PT, right? That's like, right. you know, everybody. Uh, 100%. And yeah. economies of scale, right? Because you don't have to have right. five marketers. You can have two now to market right. for five locations. Right. So there's a uh, economies of scale really kicks in with more locations. Mm -hmm. And when people trust you in one, like you said, it's like, hey, I love these guys in Miami. Let's use yeah. them in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, they, I had a, you know, uh, the patient had a good result in Miami. Fort Lauderdale, probably going to be the same result. Exactly. Going over there. Okay, cool. Yeah, almost like a franchise, but it's yeah. corporate. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the PT clinics are doing well. Um, the law change, obviously, with, uh, you know, in my, in my mind, uh, the law change that they have, you know, this house bill 837 that they just passed, like what, uh, they passed it in March. A couple of months August, ago, yeah. A couple three, months ago. Three, four months ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, it hurt, but you got to adapt just like anything else. Um, you got to uh, think, okay, where's this going to be in five years? Where's, right. well, how can I set it up for the future? And like, you know, it sucks. Uh, but at the same time, you just got to think forward. Okay. People still going to need PT. People still yep. going to need MRI. Uh, how do we how do we protect what you've created and also you know by offering great value? But you could offer the best PT service in the world if you can't get paid for your services, you go out of business. That's right. So you gotta you gotta just think about the future. You know, personally, I think they're probably going to get rid of PIP in two years. Probably um, it, everything would be LOP at that point, just like yep. a slip and fall case. Everything yep. would be LOP. And by the way, more than half the country operate like that. Yeah, yeah. I think PIP is the exception. It's like yeah. the minority. Um, but uh, um, it's okay. It'll be fine. You know, uh, yeah. if you do good work, if your patients have good results, if you uh, offer services that people want, That's right. you, you'll be a business. It's, it's a no-brainer. You just, uh, you might not make as much money. Or you might make more. Honestly, right now, man, there's so much competition. Everybody's yeah. doing this now. Oh, I want PIP. I want PIP. Okay, well, there's only like so much. Patience. <laughs> yeah, there's only so many patients. Um, and uh, so it's just, uh, you just got to look at it as different revenue streams and and, and how, how can you protect from the future? And and so, you know, it is it is what it is, right? Uh, we're we're uh, being watchful, but I think there's a lot of opportunities. You know, we 100%. just got those two MRI centers. That, the other MRI centers went out of business. We bought them. Um, and so you just have to, there's opportunities with change and there's innovation. Like yeah. if you, if you keep doing the same thing and you're not innovating, mm -hmm. innovation is key to success. Yeah. If you're not looking for the next thing or how to improve what you're doing, you're going to fail just because you never innovated. So right. I've seen a lot of physicians like, oh yeah, I got the formula. I'm making a lot of money or a lot of practices. I'm making a lot of money, mm -hmm. but brother, there's new technology. What software are you using? Mm -hmm. What technology are you using? What new approaches are, you know, this thing just came out, PRGF. I talked to doctors and surgeons like, hey, are you doing any PRGF? No, what is that? It's new technology, new PRP technology. Mm. So why aren't you doing that? 200% better results. Mm. Like what's going on? Why aren't you using that? So if you, if you just stay doing the same thing and you don't start innovating, your practice just becomes older. Your software becomes older and everything starts going on. Mm. So if you don't have innovation as top of your principles in business, you're gonna fall behind, and if you and if you're good and a good innovator, and you're always looking for up and coming things, mm -hmm. you will never be behind. Right. That's what I like about this uh, work comp conference that we're at. There's all these other vendors there. Yep. You're meeting them. You're getting ideas. You're surrounding yourself with good people, like you talked that's about. Right. You know, surrounding yourself with new people, good people, learning constantly. And that's really why I like coming here. My wife goes, "Oh, why do you go come on Monday and Tuesday? You know, it's a busy day of the week." Da 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 da. And I'm like, cause I always walk away with something that I was like, damn, that's good. That's, that's new. Right. I need to learn that, you know, that's stuff right. like that. So that's why I like coming here too. And of course I get to see cool people like you. That that's right, man. The so, coolest person. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, the PT clinics are doing well. That's incredible. I'm happy for you. Tell me a little bit about the mindset stuff that you're doing. Cause I yeah. follow you on social media yeah. and I see Thank the you, stuff man. you're talking about. Um, tell me about that. Uh, how did you get into that? Tell me where it's going. Dude, it all came because he, here's, here's the thing that I didn't realize about human behavior. Human behavior is the most incredible thing that I don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. What makes you motivated? Why do you have more grit? How can two brothers 
that are two years apart, grew up in the same household, with the same love, with the same values and principles, one is successful and the other one is not. Mm -hmm. And it's not because he got lucky, is because one has grit, determination, perseverance. You know, he's a he's a winner, and one is okay with just, you know, a little bit. He's comfortable. Yeah. So what happened, and I, the reason I got into this is because when I started selling franchises, I had some that were very successful. They were mm -hmm. making a million plus, two miles down the block, two miles. For example, I have one in Core Gables, and then I have one in Little Havana two blocks down, two miles, two, three, three miles down, mm -hmm. one can even figure it out. It's the same neighborhood mm -hmm. and same opportunity, same training. Everything was the same. Mm -hmm. This guy's making a million and this guy's going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Mm -hmm. So I was like, it, it, I couldn't understand because I thought when I sold franchises, hey, I'm just gonna sell a franchise, teach them and it's gonna work. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It's the person that runs the ship, that drives a car, mm -hmm. That's the key. And if that person doesn't get up with motivation to go to work, if that person doesn't get up to do, want to do podcasts, mm -hmm. if that guy is arrogant when he goes to talk to doctors or attorneys, he's going to lose business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then I started saying, okay, well, these two kids, these two franchisees, right, are, are good people. Well, again, why is one successful, why not? Mm -hmm. And when I started digging deep, and trying to understand the dynamics of this, this thing that was going on, I realized it was all mindset. Mm -hmm. And then I, w I went on a journey of saying, what is mindset? What the hell is this? Why is this guy successful and this guy not? And I ran into a couple of amazing speakers and I actually um, onboarded with a coach. My coach cost me over $100,000 mm -hmm. to teach me and accelerate 25 years of his life that he's dedicated to mindset and training and coaching, I got that in two years. Mm -hmm. But it was a full intense training and I didn't even know that this interested, uh, industry existed. Yet, the entire, like so many things that I learned about the mind, the body, the energy that somebody has to have. And when I started looking, it was like, we call this the unblinded formula, right? And my, my coach is blind, coincidentally. He's a blind attorney. Mm -hmm who has taught me everything there is to know about personal development. Incredible guy. Mm -hmm. My coach, my mentor, incredible guy. And my brother, I realized why some people are successful and some people are not. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I've been in this industry already three years, three, four years now. And there's people in this industry, Abe, that go to every single event, that go to all the conferences. Mm -hmm. They know all the books, they've read it, they've gone to, Tony Robbins, Jay, Jay Abraham, Keith Cunningham, they've gone to every single public speaker, they get motivated, they say yes, rah, 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 and they're still broke. Mm. Because there's still a dynamic missing internally with their fear of failure, fear of rejection. So if they like know everything, but they're still in fear of getting on a podcast, getting in front of a camera, talking on a microphone, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you have a little bit of fear, but you overcome it, you just jump in the cold water and do it. Right. But if some people, I'm sure you've invited a bunch of people to say, uh, or they get camera shock, they, they get the camera lights on. Not even, it's hard. People go, I, I don't know. Can you send me some videos of what it is? I go, dude, it's just me talking to you. It's just, yeah. We talk all the time. Can we just talk on a camera? But and the fear, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection of what people are going to think on that camera, mm -hmm. that's what prevents you from everything in life. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I realized is that these franchises, and it's not, you know, it's not their fault. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna blame anybody. It's yeah. it's a lot of stuff that's people. happened. They're good people, they're amazing people, but they're just in fear of failure, fear of rejection, mm -hmm. which is where everything starts from. Mm -hmm. So if I tell one of my franchisees, hey, you know, you gotta go knock on Abe's door, say hi to Abe, take him out to lunch or take him out to a coffee and just have a regular conversation. Oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. But why not? No, 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 I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. No, you're in fear. You're in fear of failure, you're in fear of rejection. And that at the end of the day, it's all ego. Mm -hmm. Because if I fail, like Abe, you can't tell me I'm a failure. Nobody can tell me I'm a failure. Only I can feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. so, so fear is internal. Right. And failure is internal. So I try to teach this. And some franchises have understood this because I, now I, I mentor some of them, the ones that want to be mentored. Some mm -hmm. of them tell me, Andy, I don't want like the voodoo stuff that you talk about. Like I'm a Catholic, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them told me I'm, um, 
What was it? I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I don't want to hear about this stuff. I was like, this has nothing to do with religion. <laughs> it's the craziest yeah. thing. They still don't want to learn about it. Yeah. Because some yeah. people are just comfortable. Right, right. You know, and it's okay. I love you. But yeah. if you want to be a business person, if you want to grow your business, you need to understand these dynamics of mindset. Mm -hmm. Who, What makes you want to win? Why do you want to win? What's your why? What's your mission? What's your, mm -hmm. what impact do you want to cause in life? Yeah, we're doing this for the money to help patients, but ultimately why? And and there's a lot of stuff, research on whys and books and the seven whys. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn all this stuff to be able to teach it and support the franchises. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible industry. Personal development, I recommend it for every single business owner. Yeah. And final, final, I had a, a buddy of mine who sold his company for $550 million. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of, it's a shitload of, it's, it's like F you money. I don't have to work anymore. Yeah. And I, I just, I go, brother, how did you do it? Like, what was that number one thing? And we were in a personal development event. And he goes, Andy, every single level, I had to become a different person. Mm -hmm. I had to learn about myself every single step. So mm -hmm. I wasn't the same person when I made a million dollars than when I made 10, mm -hmm. than when I made a hundred million. And he goes, when I get to 550 million, I was a totally different person. Mm -hmm. I understood myself more than ever. Yeah. But if you don't go on a soul search of what makes you you, what makes you want to win, do you want to win? Maybe mm -hmm. you're just comfortable and you're okay with a little bit of money. Yeah. And that's okay. I'm not judging anybody. But personal development is important because people, in my opinion, need to understand themselves a little bit more. Yeah. And I think, I think also just constantly learning, right? I think a lot of people... They get in the rut. Oh, I own this. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. Yeah. Okay. But like, when's the last time you read a book? Exactly. You know, when's the last time you looked into getting a better software so you can care for your patients better, lower your costs, make it easier for them to get their records or better notes or whatever. Sure. When's the last time you did that? Oh, no, I'm good. I, I, I've been a doctor for 20 years. I'm okay. Yeah, but a lot's changed in 20 years. You know, 20 years ago, you didn't have a phone on you telling you where to be, what to do, That's right. uh, pinging every two seconds, you know? And people, uh, you got to constantly evolve. You got to constantly Innovation, change. look for that innovation. Innovation, I like that, yeah. And uh, for me, I started actually during the pandemic. I think I went from here to like here during the pandemic. I was freaked out. I was going to die from COVID. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm too young to die. I'm too good looking. I was fat. <laughs> I was chubby. I'm, I'm not going to say fat like morbidly no no obese. you were a little chubby i remember i, was, I remember I was, those I was, days I was, it was a lot there was a lot of alcohol <laughs> there's a lot of alcohol in the in the belly um i definitely you know was a bit i was, I was a little husky but anyways <laughs> i'm working on that but um uh i started going for walks because i was like yeah. i gotta lose weight i gotta get healthy and um i started but, doing but, audible yeah but wait a second but why did he start doing that well, i don't want to die bro <laughs> but why wait a second why don't you want to die Oh, I got two kids. I got a lot of things I want to accomplish. So it goes know. deep. You see, yeah. when you start asking why, yeah. what made you want to change? Why did you start go, walking, going to the gym? Because yeah. you have two kids. You want to live longer to be able to see your kids grow up. And right. so you start digging deep inside and you realize, fuck, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go run that extra mile because I want to be healthy for my kids. Yeah. That's the missing link. And then having a little bit of vision mm -hmm. of what you want in life. That's mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So I started exactly. So I started, uh, I, I got Audible. I was, I got Instagram. I was never on Instagram. I was like, I gotta get on this Instagram thing. I got Audible. I started listening to Grant Cardone. Do you like him? I love, no? oh, there's a lot of things I love about Grant Cardone. And then there's a lot of things I don't like. He's, he could be obnoxious, but he's obnoxious because he wants you to look at him and be like, who the hell is this guy? And then you're I know like, you're hey, a 10X fan. Yeah, and you I see, I see, yeah, yeah, what's up? I, I like Grant Cardone. I like what he stands for. I like yeah. his, I like a lot of the things he does. Um. You know, there's a lot of things I don't like about Grant Cardone. You know, he's a little aggressive on the sales and yeah. he will do anything for, like he'll say anything for sale, which is great. Cause at the end of the day, his why is money. His why yeah. is to, you know, bring a lot of revenue in his system, mm -hmm. you know, but there's a lot of integral, more integrous ways to do things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and bring uh, a little bit more value into what he does, but he's an incredible businessman, respect him.
Yeah. Um, but he's very aggressive. And, and I think Super that aggressive. not everybody wants to be that aggressive. Yeah. They want to bring value, make the same money. And, and but he's an incredible guy. I, I like it's, him a lot. He, he, he like started out doing sales and he started doing mindset and he, but yeah, he's very aggressive and you could tell who takes his course. Cause he's like, that's not a alpha. Person. It's all alpha males. Yeah. He's like, you're not saying no, you're just saying not yet. And I need to know why you're saying not yet. And if you're not saying not yet, I need to know right now why. And it's like, bro, I just told you, no. I had this guy show up at my door to sell me pest control. I like my pest control guy. He's Rudy. He comes by. Uh, tech, yo, man, having this problem. Can you take it? Boom, done. No problems. He doesn't bother me. He's like, he just gets his monthly thing done. This guy's knocking on my door. Listen, man, is he doing this for you? Is he doing that for you? I could do this for you. I could do that for you. I'm like, look, I had to walk backwards and say, look, man, I'm sorry. Walking backwards. I'm closing my door on you. I don't want to be rude. Um, but that you can tell 100% he took the Grant Cardone course. But I, I like Grant for the mindset stuff. Yeah. You know, he goes, he goes, you know, Read books. Of like course. Read books. Um, you know, go to the gym. Go to bed early. Um, work out. You know, spend time with your wife. Yep. You know, spend time yep. with your wife. Go work out. Um, you know, uh, don't eat lunch alone. Why do you eat lunch alone? Go yep. meet somebody. That's Make right. a friend. Friends can add you to the new space. You were talking earlier. You, you know, you were from Miami. You were just starting out. You didn't really know anybody. You're 24. Now look at the people you know. Look at where you're at. The more people you know. And I'm not just talking about quantity yeah but people who you know get a mentor that's what he talks about get a mentor get five mentors that's right that have what you want and then when you get to that level get five new mentors that's right and at and, a different level at a different level because it is different um levels but i think i think when i started listening to grant cardone i started my mind started your mind is like yeah, my mind you're yeah. in like 10 different businesses and you're doing all these things and i'm like i can't stop my wife's like she's like damn it this guy found something new and he's gonna be doing this shit oh <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry, babe, but I gotta, there's something in me that I just, I wanna work, I wanna do. It drives me crazy when I meet business owners who they, they walk into the office at 1030. I go, yeah. well, you should have been here first thing yeah. in the morning. You should be there early. So your staff knows, hey man, this guy's on the ball. When you show up at 1030, 11 o'clock, they're like, he doesn't care about his business. That's right. And uh, you know, for me, uh, the, 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 the law firm, I love what I do. I'm like, we get people money. Um, for their injuries, for whatever their insurance claim that they got, we get them money. Yep. Uh, we get them happy. Their insurance company didn't pay them, and now we're getting we're righting a wrong. And I love that. That's right. It. And that's why I get up in the morning and I and I do what I do. Um, and and you know that's branched off into the MRI. I hated my clients going to get MRIs. That's right. At a at a at a garbage place. The subpar. Subpar. The machine is subpar. The Staff isn't nice. They don't, I don't want to go the there. scheduling disaster. Scheduling, yeah. So uh, branched off into that. Um, and then uh, now some other stuff that I'm in. But, um, you know, it's, it's still like a passion of mine. And I get out of bed and I'm like, I got to do this. Or I'm thinking about it. It's it, all the times we have. We, I still, oh, man, I got to call that one client. I wonder how they're doing. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's what I like to do. And that's my why, I guess. Is yeah. I like helping people. Um, but, uh, that's, I, I think for me, I took off like a rocket ship with listening to Grant Cardone. I encourage yeah. other people if, if he's not your cup of tea, cause he's super, uh, find somebody. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's somebody. millions of people out there, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. There's incredible people. Yeah. And you always hear, oh, Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins. Tony, and he's, he's one guy and he does yeah. certain people like his stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, I've read some of his books and I, I don't, so I don't read books. I listen to audible. That is yeah. like a game changer. Yeah. When I got yeah. audible, I was like, dude, this is yeah, the best this is thing awesome. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I love audible. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're doing this mindset stuff. So you branched off into that to coach your franchisees as well. 100% was to coach the franchisees. Okay. And then I, I also ran into a roadblock. Like they don't want this stuff. Mm. Like I have the formula on how to build relationships. Yeah. I have the formula on how to make money, mm. how to grow your relationship capital. They don't want it. They're yeah. like, no, 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 I'm good. Right. It's free. I'm not charging you. It's free. Like I'm going to give yeah. you everything I learned just have a conversation with me for an hour or two and I'm yeah. gonna teach you. And some people, like my chief marketing officer, director back here, the guy sat there. He's your hype man, by the way. You can't see him, but he's behind you. And when you say something good, he's like, yo. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> my brother, Armando. Yeah. But Armando sat here five years ago, four years ago when I started this and, and he would just absorb everything. He was mm -hmm. like, that makes a lot of sense. And this guy who was an incredible person with incredible energy, learned the formulas and became 10X, 20X mm -hmm. on himself, his personality, his money, everything, his relationship capital grew. It was the most incredible, beautiful thing to see that somebody took the advice and grew 10, 20X. Mm -hmm. 
And so we do have some people that, uh, that you know, they've grown, they've taken the advice, that they love it, that they're in gratitude, that they're in love in their heart mm-hmm. and they're doing amazing. And some people are like, no, I don't want it. But that's the thing about it is you don't care about the world. You care about changing that one person's life. Yeah. You know, obviously, look, I would love to change a million people's lives. But if I get that one person and they alter the course of their uh, family, uh, their life, their friends' lives, uh, to me, I think it's I think it's worth it. And I and, yeah. I, and I respect you for that because it's time out of your day from your family, from your business, from your whatever. That's right. And uh, but you're putting it out there to, to help them personally grow, which is hard because people uh, sometimes they don't want to accept that. And, and, you know, it's funny, a lot of first reaction and, and me, too, I'm trying to change this. No, default, default. Yeah. No. Yeah. Default. No, because you're constantly being sold so crap true, yeah. that you don't need. But it's like it's like you're genuinely like, I'm not even charging you. Yeah, I'm you not know? charging. you. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, but then at the end, you're like, buy my course for thirty nine ninety nine. You know, but it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's like what is thirty? Like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, you yeah. don't sell it, but it's like, what is thirty nine dollars when you buy a book? And, and Grant talks about this. When you buy a book for 20 bucks, 40 bucks, that book, if it was worth ten thousand dollars and you learned how to make a million dollars. Yeah. It's a deal. Hell yeah. You know, and it's they're not ten thousand dollars. They're 20 bucks or something, you know. Um, so that's that's what I like about Audible. I've been slacking a little bit, but when I do this, you know, like I'll drive to Orlando for this. I'll put on an audible. One hundred percent. Yeah. And and I'll and I'll I'll learn something. I'll consume some yeah. kind of knowledge that I go, damn, this could help my clients, my business, my marriage, right? People don't realize what's more important to you, the business or the girl. Yeah. Bro, if both. I don't got the girl, I mean, the, well, the, the, yeah. both is, is <laughs> ideal situation. But if I don't got the girl, I'm going to lose a big chunk of the business. If, That's right. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, man, it drives me crazy. Uh, they lose the girl. The girl either takes half the business or mentally, these guys are not the same. Yeah. And you see the guy one day and he's on top of the world. Everything's yep. great. But he didn't take care of the girl. He didn't take care of the kids. And now he's just all the way down here and it drives me nuts. And I'm like, bro, it's, yes, they're difficult people. They are weird, okay? We, we're cool with them, they're weird. There's something wrong with them. But you know what? They if don't think can, like us. They don't think like us, you know? But if you can if you can work on all that, everything starts firing yeah. so great for your, your business does better when your relationship is good with your 100%. significant other, you know? And uh, yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been fortunate I have a, very loving wife who puts up with me and my business ideas and oh i'm going to go over here for work and this and that that's I've been, important I've been pretty yeah dude, that's I've super been, important i've been pretty lucky but um but it, it is tough you know and it's tough to balance all those things and um cool but what, but wait but wait before you before you go to the next thing mindset you know like you said there's coaches but if you're struggling in your relationship there's also coaches for this. Yeah. If you're struggling in building relationships, there's coaches for that. Mm-hmm. And I used to think like, oh shit, everybody's a freaking coach, right? Like you have coach on your on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, everybody's a coach. Yeah. No, yes and no. I'm mm-hmm. sure that those person can teach you something because they've gone through the challenge. They've gone through, they've learned something. And you know, there's there's something inside of us that when we give a gift to somebody, like a like a coach, or we give them knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's very gratifying to us, to to humans, to see you succeed on something that I, look what I just talked about Armando. Like that is one of my biggest um, wins in my life. It's like, I taught this guy how to be successful. Mm-hmm. And that to me is priceless. And, our, and for the record, Armando's shaking his head yes back there. He's not like, what? He's like shaking his head, yeah, this guy is one of my guys. Well, that's yeah. priceless to me, but, it, but that's why coaches do this stuff. So if mm-hmm. you don't, if you're struggling with anything in your life, find the coach. It might be the right one. It might not be the right one. Do some due diligence. It's just like buying a car. You got to find that the right that the right coach has has he been recommended or did you just see him on LinkedIn and all of a sudden yeah. you're going to hire him. You don't do it like that. You have to do some research. But yeah. co- coaching and hiring a mentor is very important in whatever yeah. aspect. You want to go snowboarding? Hire a freaking coach. I hired a coach. Mm-hmm. This guy taught me everything. You know, it's just that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of people try to go it alone. Yeah. And even me too, like as a younger guy, I think I tried to go it alone and um, I didn't have that support. You know, it was just uh, probably like you, you know, I just grew up. It was me uh, and my mom. She didn't have nothing. She worked uh, multiple jobs to just to pay for the rent. Like she didn't have nothing. She had a car like that was it. Uh, A Ford Escort, you know, so I didn't have uh, opportunity. I'm sure you're the same way. You didn't have opportunities to go to that guy who is the millionaire and say, listen, I. 
I, I want to do something, but I don't know how or where. Yeah. And that's, you know, listen, if, if, if you don't have somebody like that, you got to hire somebody like that. Exactly. You can't find them. Yeah. And to be honest, there's people everywhere that would say, you know what, if you want to listen to me and come hang out with me and work with me, yeah. let's do it. But I want to see commitment. I don't want to yeah. like, I don't want to, I don't be calling you at 10 AM. Where are you? You told yeah, me to be here. Exactly. Um, but, uh, but if, if you can't find somebody that's willing to give you the time for free, yeah. then pay somebody. By the way, there is a lot of mail. Like, I'm sure if somebody came up to you genuinely asking, Hey, Abe, can you mentor me for five hours? Mm -hmm. like a month can you give me 30 minutes a, a month mm -hmm. you know respecting your time can you give me 30 minutes i just want to i want to be successful like you mm -hmm. like in your heart as i know who you are Abe, you mm -hmm. would say 95 percent of the time to say let me find out when i have extra time and i'll do it for you yeah. because it's you're that type of guy mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like this a lot of multi-millionaires will give their time because that is their way of contribution to life like mm -hmm. contributing, whether it's money, some people like to donate money and some people like to donate time. Mm -hmm. I donate a lot of my time to younger kids, mm -hmm. kids in high school that come up to me, kids in college come up to me, say, oh, come on, let's, let's talk for an hour. You were a coach in high school, right? I was a wrestling coach. Yeah, yeah. you were a wrestling yeah, coach, yeah. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got like yeah. 400 students under my belt. Wow, that's Some cool. state champions, some So you've always champions. had a passion for coaching and training. And training, it's just, yeah. it's in me. When I learn something, you know, I wasn't given that. I, I, you know, we came from a very poor neighborhood, not enough, not a lot of resources, not a lot of relationship capital, right? Right. right. So who did I know? My uncle, my aunt, my my, my teachers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't, ha I couldn't ask enough questions to enough people. And they don't know the answer to the questions of where you need help. You yeah, I, I didn't have a, I didn't have nobody. So when somebody comes up to me that I see that, wow, I can change this guy's life with a conversation, then you, you, I, I. That's my form of contribution. Yeah, and can you imagine uh, back then when you were a wrestling coach, if you had known what you know now? No, they'd be unstoppable. Those kids, those kids would be billionaires. Unstoppable. They'd be calling you, being like, "Hey, listen, man, uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I got billions of dollars because yeah. of the advice you gave me." I have a few that are making millions. I yeah, have a few that good. are making millions, and they're that's very good. grateful. They stay in touch. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and, and, and I do mentor like other attorneys, other uh, people. Um, I try to give my time and my knowledge and, and just give people advice. Sometimes they're like, I don't want it. This guy is yeah. not, you know, whatever. And that's and that's fine. But for that one person that if I could help them or even if I could just send somebody like a positive message, yeah. I, that that to me makes my day. Because if somebody's, ha you know, you don't know this, but somebody's having a really bad day. Yeah. And you send them a nice text. Hey, man, I hope you're doing good. You're, 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 you're a rock star or whatever. You're kicking ass. I see uh, it. You know, yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah, good job. Man. Yeah. And then they're, they're happy. I, that to me is yeah. good. And, changes and, their day, changes their energy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. For sure. So cool, man. Uh, what's next for you in life? Where are you going to be in five, 10 years? <laughs> Brother, I've, I've dug deep, deep, deep into this. And I'm always looking to see the next big ticket item. Like mm -hmm. how do I help more people? What's my mission in life? How can I cause impact? How can I leave some a legacy in this planet? And at the same time, how can I take care of my children, my family, my wife, if mm -hmm. anything happens? So we have a, a few things in the in line. We're working, you know, one of the things that we realize, I'm in healthcare, and one of the things that we realize is that there's 7 million people that die every single year due to medical errors. Mm -hmm. And medical errors is a lot of technology now that can help you alleviate some of that, mm -hmm. right? So we're working, we have our own software that we give to thousands of doctors now, chiros, orthos, pain, spine surgeon, um, urgent cares, surgical centers are using my software, MRI centers are using my software. Mm -hmm. And so now that I own the technology, I said, what else can I do to help alleviate some of that pain in the world? Mm -hmm. The people are dying. Mm -hmm. But what if, you know, one of the things we're working on is, I mean, we have so much technology now, we have millions of dollars in technology. But what if you can walk around with your phone and there's a little, QR code in the back that if you go to a hospital, you're like, hey, I got, you know, I feel bad, scan my code. Now all of a sudden your records show up. Mm. You know, every single, excuse me, every single medication you're on, what you're allergic to, what your vitals have been for the last year, mm -hmm. right? And then you can just say, oh, there's no medical errors because if you have, if you're diabetic and you're taking that specific medication, I'm not gonna say anything, but you go to the hospital at an emergency room and they give you another medication and it's contra contraindicated with that medication, Mm -hmm. you're gonna die, right? you're gonna die. And then all of a sudden it's like, what's oh, a tragedy, sorry. He didn't say he was on this other medication. So it's the patient's fault. Right, right. But how do we avoid those deaths? How do we avoid that, that, that pain? 
you can you can alleviate that with some technology and we're working mm -hmm. on technology to be able to help that that's cool man awesome yeah awesome cool so uh you know it's funny uh all these softwares there's a million different billing softwares uh there's some that have the medical records and the billing there's some that just the billing yeah. and there's thousands of them and uh there's just so many and you know at the mri center we were looking for one that worked for our needs for what we thought right. was good and we came across one that we liked but um a lot of them are just there's so much competition yeah that it's difficult to have something like what you're talking about because that's really powerful if all your records are in one place that's and right. anybody says oh this guy is unconscious let's see what's going on he's in a coma let's let's see see his medical records nowadays if somebody if you're in a coma they go oh man well you got to go get your records <laughs> your family's got to go get your records from this doctor and that doctor yeah. and oh he went to an urgent care once in the middle of nowhere and we got to find that and those places some of those doctor's offices they're not even around anymore yeah. right that they come and go some of these places so um healthcare is just all over the place and so yeah. consolidating something like that would be really cool or yeah. even if a patient said hey i want to have uh, i would personally pay for a service where i yeah. kept all my medical records in this one vault that's what we're doing and that's that's cool that it's like cool. a medical dropbox yeah so cool. so what happens is that you can compile grab all your records from all your doctors upload them to your dropbox mm -hmm. in your medical dropbox yeah and then next time you go to the hospital they have to scan the code and say hey here are my records scan the code this is my password uh, my password is my social or my password is this yeah. get on my records yeah or they can get it somehow yeah, yeah you know and, and it's in it's in a file it's in a hipaa right. compliant file that nobody can get into except if you give them those two passwords right this uh this uh, mri center that we just they went out of business they literally you know unfortunately for them they went bankrupt um we bought the two locations there's people going there hey um i had an mri and i never got the results well i'm sorry they went out of business and you're gonna have to get a new MRI. Wow. I don't have the images, they have them. And uh, I'm sure at some point there will be something where they can get these, these people could get their records, but um, imagine, you know, MRI report yeah. that could save your life, a comparison read uh, that could prevent you from having, you know, deciding do you need a surgery yeah. or not. All those people, that place was in business 20 some years. It's all gone now. Yeah. And if I was a patient, I'd be pissed. Um, so, uh, you know, something like that, places come and go, uh, there's mergers, people lose files. That's right. That's a really cool, powerful idea. I like that idea. Yeah. And, and, and it's at the end of the day, we're selling software, mm -hmm. right? So, how, so, I mean, this is, uh, one of our marketing strategies. So we give, whether it's a dollar 99 a month for the storage, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but we, we give all the storage to the patients so they can have easy access to dump their files in there. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the doctor's office, their primary care, their next, you know, in order for that doctor to access those records, you need to put who you are. You need to mm -hmm. register with the software. So I'm gonna be registering all these doctors organically, mm -hmm. getting their information, and then maybe retargeting them and say, hey, we have a better software. This is why you should use ours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cool. it's a little like bit that. of marketing behind the whole thing yeah. as well. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, man. So um appreciate you being here. Thank it's you. always a pleasure hanging out and talking with you. Um always. so thanks for being here. Let's get back out there to the convention and let's do it. Let's, let's make do it some relationship capital, baby. Thank let's go. You. Thanks for bringing me. Let's go. Thanks. Thanks everybody for listening and peace out. Peace out. Hey, hey, oh.